California's State Water Project is considered one of the greatest American engineering achievements of the 20th century. An endeavor as massive and challenging as the State Water Project might have scared off most people. But William Gianelli wasn't like most people. 250 miles north of here, when we started the water coming south, he said to me just before he pushed the button, he said, this damn thing better work or you better head for that canal. <laughs> Gianelli was never afraid to face a challenge, and he would go on to play a vital role in the State Water Project. Born in Stockton, California in 1919, Gianelli's love for water and the Delta began early in life. I spent several of my happy years as a sea scout on the Delta. We used to tool around those channels. And continued with his graduation from the University of California, Berkeley in civil engineering in 1941. After graduation, Gianelli served in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers during World War II. He was involved with the construction of airfields, water supply facilities, and other public works projects. I got my discharge uh, at the end of 45, and in March of 1946, I went to work as a junior engineer in the Division of Water Resources. As water master and assistant state snow surveyor, he learned that water is the lifeblood of a lot of people in California, a lesson that would pay off in the future. During Gianelli's eight years as the chief of the water rights section, he became familiar with a lot of the major water projects in California, including the one that would make a huge difference on both the people of California and his own future. The state engineer asked me to prepare applications for what he called at that time the Feather River and Delta Diversion Projects. This was the prelude to what is now referred to and has been referred to as the State Water Project. After the creation of the Department of Water Resources in 1956, the goal was to get the State Water Project built. But there was a challenge. The big argument at that time was between the north and the south of California. The basic argument being that the people in Northern California were afraid of a statewide project which would take water to Southern California, then perhaps it wouldn't be available to Northern California when they wanted it at a later date. And likewise, the people in Southern California were afraid if they used their financial support to build a state water project, then water might be taken away from them. Governor Pat Brown decided to get away from the legal argument of North versus South by enacting a constitutional amendment. What the legislators devised was the Burns-Porter Act, which would provide the financing needed to build the state water project. Once Gianelli got the Burns-Porter Act through the legislature in 59, Harvey Banks appointed him to run the Southern California District. Gianelli worked there for six months before deciding to leave DWR to open a consulting firm. I had a wide variety of continuing water experiences and uh, I was very happy and I was doing very well. But in January of 1967, Governor Ronald Reagan lured him back and appointed Gianelli as director of DWR. He would take the helm of the building of the initial state water project facilities. When the prospect came along of, of coming back in the department, I couldn't resist it because I was so deeply involved with the formulation of the project in the first place. I thought this would be fun to come back into the project at this point and see if we could make the thing go the way it was supposed to go. Things were well on their way on the State Water Project. Since the Burns-Porter Act was voted in on November 8, 1960, construction had begun on Oroville Dam and San Luis Reservoir and crews building the California Aqueduct had been steadily moving down the state. So that was a big time uh, in terms of moving ahead with the water project. 
When I came aboard in 1967, Orville Dam was pretty well along the line, pretty well completed, and we were able to complete it and then start the rest of the project. Gianelli knew there were hurdles in the State Water Project's construction that would need solutions. When I came in, one of the first things I asked the governor to do was to create a task force to take a look at the status of the State Water Project, both from a financing and from an engineering standpoint. One of the things that still had not been decided was how you get over the Tehachapi Mountains with a large lift. Many people felt that you couldn't design a big pump that could lift the water over the Tehachapi Mountains without a lot of problems. They believed two lifts would be needed. The department found a pump that they thought would deliver the water in one lift, so Gianelli decided to use it to send the water over 1,926 feet up the Tehachapi Mountains, higher than it had ever been lifted anywhere in the world before. Today, California is celebrating the opening of a pumping plant unlike any ever built in any part of the world. And now if we hear five bangs, we have just built the longest swimming pool man's ever built. Start the motor. The pump worked, and the State Water Project was now sending water from Oroville in Northern California all the way down to Santa Clarita in Southern California. Work was already underway on the various dams and lakes in Southern California. including the final point in the state water project, Lake Paris in Riverside County. I told the governor when we finished the project, that's enough, I really had enough because it was a big job. In 1973, after the water arrived to Lake Paris, Gianelli went back into consulting. He also advised DWR leaders and educated people about the need for water and water development in California. So Jack Chrisman and I worked to create the Water Education Foundation. We felt that there was a need for an outfit outside of government to educate Californians on this water problems. President Ronald Reagan brought Gianelli back to public service in 1981, appointing him the Assistant Secretary of the Army. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to appear before you to discuss the Panama Canal and the possible impact on its operations from the ongoing political unrest in Panama. He was the first assistant secretary to have a civil engineering education and was given jurisdiction over the civil functions of the Army Corps of Engineers, Arlington Cemetery, and the operation of the Panama Canal. Whether we'll be able to deal with them fully, I think we'll just have to depend how the situation occurs uh, when it does occur. Gianelli remained involved with the Water Education Foundation, serving as its president. In 1997, the foundation created the William R. Gianelli Water Leaders Program, resulting in around 400 graduates of water community leaders. To honor him for playing a vital role in the State Water Project, the Department of Water Resources renamed the San Luis Pumping Generating Plant to the William R. Gianelli Pumping Generating Plant in 1989. I look back on my various experiences, and I think the uh, Director of Water Resources and putting the project together it was one of the most exciting things that I've ever done. Although his career was over, his legacy would continue to play a positive role in the lives of millions of Californians.